Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to building a Bluetooth to serial or UART bridge using an ESP32 and the Arduino environment and this will be part one in a two-part series. Before I get started, just I'll mention, please support me on Patreon where you can access exclusive content, including exclusive content from this video series. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Forstronics YouTube channel. And if you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up. All right, let's get started. As I mentioned, this will be a two part series. And what we're building here is we're using an ESP32 to create a wireless serial connection between two devices. One is going to be the ESP32 and the other could be a cell phone, a computer, or another Bluetooth device. And we're going to use the Bluetooth standard to communicate this serial data wirelessly. And with the ESP32, that data that is sent over the Bluetooth serial link will come out the serial, the wired serial port on the ESP32. And then vice versa, if we send data through the wire, wired serial port on the ESP32, it'll come through the Bluetooth communication to whatever device you're paired with. But it's basically a bridge between wired serial and Bluetooth or wireless serial. So that's what we're building. And part one will focus on the code that enables this bridge functionality and we'll look at a demo of it. But in part two, which will be mainly focused on going through the rest of the code, we also have built in a command mode. And if you're familiar with AT commands, this is like a pseudo AT command type functionality where it allows you to set certain settings such as the baud rate for the wired serial or the device name for the Bluetooth signal. And that is stored in non-volatile memory. So the next time the device boots up, it'll have that new name or that new baud rate that you set. Okay, the full code from this video series is only gonna be available on my Patreon page, which costs less than a cup of coffee for a one month subscription. If you don't wanna do that, you can also just copy the code that you're gonna see in the video. A very, very brief introduction to Bluetooth. So Bluetooth, I think most people watching this know this, Bluetooth is a very short range wireless technology. It's very versatile, it's very easy to use. To initiate a Bluetooth connection, you need to pair with a Bluetooth device. And often Bluetooth is referred to as a personal area network type standard or PAN. I'm a big history fan and, and I found this interesting. Bluetooth is actually named after a Denmark and Norwegian king from the 10th century called Harold Bluetooth. And in fact, if you look to the right, the Bluetooth symbol comes from the Nordic H for Herald and the Nordic B for Bluetooth. Now, one thing that makes the Bluetooth standard so versatile is it has these built-in profiles. And these profiles define how the Bluetooth functionality works. And the profiles are meant to address certain applications. So for our application, we're gonna use the serial port profile so this is a profile that's made specifically for Bluetooth to act like a wireless serial connection. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. If you're interested in using Bluetooth to connect to medical devices or to stream audio for, you know, for instance, wireless earbuds, this is not the video for you. This is just gonna talk about using Bluetooth to create a wireless serial connection. Okay, this, this slide's just showing the building blocks. A lot of these I already touched on, but the idea is we're leveraging the Bluetooth standard and its serial port profile, which uses the RF COM protocol, which was made to once again emulate RST32 or a serial connection wirelessly. We're gonna use an ESP32. I'm using the ESP32 VRU module. This should work though for any ESP module that is supported by the Arduino environment and that you can use the Bluetooth serial library with. So this is an Arduino library that's made the work with the ESP32. And this library is gonna abstract all the details of the Bluetooth standard to implement this serial port profile. So we don't have to worry about this. We're just gonna to have to use this very easy to use Bluetooth serial library. And as I already mentioned, what are we creating? We're creating a bi-directional Bluetooth serial bridge. And we're also gonna have functionality such as a command mode that allows us to change settings. And those settings are gonna be saved in non-volatile memory. The first bullet we're gonna cover here in part one, the other two bullets we're gonna cover in part two, and part two is mainly just gonna be looking at the code. All right, let's look at a demo first of our Bluetooth to serial bridge in action. 
Okay, we're going to look at a demo of the Bluetooth to Serial Bridge. You can see I have a development board with an ESP32 room module. And if you are familiar with Forstronics videos, you might recognize this as the ESP32 Forstronics dev module, which has various functionality, including USB power. It has a lithium ion cell that you can plug in to power it, so on and so forth. So I have other videos on how this board was designed and all the design files and things like that can be found on Patreon. That is our Bluetooth module. It's connected to this laptop. And you can see this is an Arduino serial terminal. You can use any serial terminal, but I'm just using the built-in Arduino serial terminal. And so the program booted up and executed and it's sort of printing out some initial messages, right? So it's starting the program. It's telling us if this, is, if this was the first time memory was used, what is the baud rate, what is the Bluetooth device name, and it also prints out information on using command mode, which we'll cover in part two. And you can see I already have a message ready to send in the terminal. The ESP32 dev board we just saw is connected to my laptop computer. And so the serial port on the ESP32 is going through USB to the computer. And so this is where we're going to see data from Bluetooth printed out at. And if we send data from here, we're going to see it then on a cell phone that I'm going to show you in a minute, which is also running a Bluetooth serial terminal. So here we're going to pan down to my cell phone. So this is a free app and I can, I'll put the name of the app in the description of the video, but you can use any serial Bluetooth terminal. There's, there's tons of apps out there. And then of course, ideally, if you're implementing this for a real project, you would you know custom design an app that reads the serial data and displays maybe sensor information or diagnostic information or whatever you're trying to design for. Okay, so I am gonna to go to the devices menu and you can see there is the name that the SP32 is broadcasting as its Bluetooth device name. And I didn't show this in the video, but before I opened the app, I paired to this Bluetooth device on my phone. That's why it's already highlighted in green. So you gotta pair first before you bring it up in this terminal. So I'm just gonna select it. We are connected to it. We can see it at the bottom, connecting to the Forstronics Blue device, and we're connected. And you can see I have a message already ready to send. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send that message, press the button. You can see the message gets echoed into that terminal, but it also gets echoed into this terminal or sent to this terminal, I should say. Hello from the Bluetooth serial terminal. All right, so that was sent over Bluetooth. And then I'm going to send this message, pressing the send button. There I go. I sent it. And then you can see it over here. Hello from the wired serial terminal. Now, one thing important to note is the Bluetooth message that was echoed on this terminal, that's just a setting. The code doesn't do that. This was just a setting in the app that says echo anything I send. All right, with that demo, let's look at the code. Oh, and I'll mention that I'll show a demo in part two that shows the command mode in action. Okay, here is the Arduino serial to Bluetooth ESP32 sketch. Notice the first thing I do is I include the Bluetooth to serial.h library, which works with the ESP32. This library is very easy to use because you use it just like you use the serial, the built-in wired serial library in Arduino. So if you're familiar with serial begin, print, print line, read, all those same functions are built into this Bluetooth serial library, which makes it real easy to use. This definitions.h file is where I store my constant variables. And then I have another library called memory handler. And that's where I store the Bluetooth device name and the baud rate and where I fetch it uh, when the device boots up. I have a couple global variables here. So one is the device name. So the, this is the default one. But when the software first starts, it checks to see if there's one in memory, a different one in memory that it wants to use. This is just declaring a serial Bluetooth object. This is declaring a memory handler object, which we'll cover in part two. I have a global variable to hold the baud rate. Once again, this is the default baud rate, but the program will grab whatever's in memory. And then I have another global variable that detects what mode we're in. Are we in bridge mode, which means, which is what this is saying, not command mode. And if we're in command mode, are we using command mode through the Bluetooth terminal or the wired terminal? So we'll look at that in the code. Here is the familiar setup file. 
So what I do is I declare a Boolean, a local Boolean, that basically memory is checked to see if this is the first time the device was turned on. If it is, memory is initiated. If it's not, device name and baud rate are read from memory. And we'll go into that code in part two. Here's where I start the Bluetooth library and I enter the argument I'm entering is the device name. I then pause for five seconds. I just added that so it gives me time to open the wired serial terminal on my computer. I then do a serial begin and I, I feed in the baud rate. I then create a local variable called print mode. And so I'm gonna print those messages we saw in the demo that start when the software starts, that comes from these functions here. And this print mode is saying, print that information to the wired serial terminal, not the Bluetooth serial terminal. If I change this to a constant that says the Bluetooth command mode, then it would have printed that introductory message to the Bluetooth device, assuming it was already paired. These functions, print string data is just a wrapper for the different wired print functions and the Bluetooth print functions. So notice I have the print mode, which tells us, which tells it to print to the wired Bluetooth terminal. I have this constant that says include endline, and then I have a string with a message that I want printed. And so let's go see what's under the hood for this function. Okay, here is that function we just looked at. And what I did is I created this function to be a wrapper for both the wired serial prints and the Bluetooth serial prints. So this first argument tells us what mode we're in. So for the setup code, we're in, I fed in the constant in wire command mode. So this if statement would be true and we print that information to the wired serial monitor. And this Boolean allows me to specify whether I want a line feed, which is print line, or if I don't want a line feed, which is just the standard print, right? So true is line feed, false is standard print. And then of course the string that I wanna print. And so this single function allows me to access the wired connection as well as the Bluetooth one. And I did that for all the common serial commands, whether it's just printing a char of data or a string of data, whether we want to parse an int from the serial buffer, or whether we want to peek at data, whether we want to read string data or just read a byte or char of data. I set up all these functions that call either the wired serial terminal or the Bluetooth serial terminal. Another critical function that I want to show you is the data available. So I'm sure everybody who uses Arduino is familiar with the serial variable available, which returns a zero if the serial buffer is empty, the serial receive buffer is empty, and a one if it's not. And so we have one, of course, for the wired serial and the Bluetooth serial. So what I do is I feed in what mode we're in. So let's say we're not in, we're not in command mode for Bluetooth or serial, we're just in bridge mode. This S mode will be a zero, this if statement will be true, and what this does is it checks to see if there's available data on either serial terminal. And then it will return a value greater than zero. It returns a one if we're in wired command mode and a two if we're in Bluetooth command mode. That way, when this function returns, I know if there's data available, and then I also know what interface that data is available on. If we're already in command mode, whether Bluetooth or wired serial, then we go to these else statements, else if, and we just check if, if serial data is available from the wired mode or the Bluetooth mode. So sort of a versatile function for checking if there's available data. And we use this function a lot in the code. Okay, we went through the setup. We went through our wrappers for our different serial functions. In our loop, it's pretty simple. We just have two functions. We have one that handles the bridge communication. It's waiting to listen for data on any interface. If it gets that data and it's available, it reads it and then spits it out the other interface. And then we have our handle command mode function, which allows you to change certain settings such as the device name and baud rate. So we'll cover the second function in part two, but this first function, let's look at that. That's where, that's where our serial bridge functionality is handled. Okay, here it is, handle serial data. So first thing we do is we declare a local char, which we're gonna to use to read data from the serial buffer. We are not in command mode right now, we're in bridge mode. So that's why we're setting this global to, to say we're not in command mode. We then are waiting for data to be available. So this once when this function executes, it checks the data available function, right? 
and we put in not in command mode. So that means this will either return zero if no data is available, or it'll return a one or a two stating that data is available and which port it's available on, the wired or the wireless port. So this if statement's true if data mode is above zero, right? And then what we do is we read that byte of data that's available from the buffer. And the first thing we do is we check if it's a plus. And so plus is the secret code character to enter command mode. And you know you can change this to whatever you want. I just used plus. If it's not a plus, and once again, we'll cover this in part two, we then just use bridge mode. So we say, okay, this data mode variable, which we read from the data available function, is it equal to wired command mode? If so, we wanna take that byte of data and send it over the wireless serial connection, right? Because we're just echoing it from one terminal to the other. And then the else statement says, oh, we're in Bluetooth mode, so send this over the wired command mode. So that's how simple the code is for handling the bridge. The, the code for command mode and storing information in memory is actually, there's much more code involved with those functionalities than the bridge mode. So you can see the bridge mode is pretty simple. Okay, that's it for part one of building a Bluetooth the serial bridge using the ESP32 and the Arduino environment. I hope to see you back for part two. If you have any questions from this video, use the comment section below. And if you're more of an expert on Bluetooth than I am and you think I missed something or misspoke, please use the comment section below and correct me or add useful information for me and the other watchers of the video. Thank you for watching.